John and I stayed in that station. But the next day, I think, a train came back. And on it was the little boy. He stepped out. And someone, someone asked him, why have you come back? He said, I could not forget his tears. And you know something? Beforehand, many people had told that boy about Christ. But this was the very first person ever who loved that boy so much that he cried over him. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not love, even if I shout from the rooftops, come to Jesus, I am nothing. Well, there's two ways to shine Jesus. And the one is to walk Jesus, and the other is to talk Jesus. And obviously you can't talk about Jesus if you don't walk Jesus. Proverbs 11 verse 30, I think, says, He that winneth souls is wise. Very wise. And if we read in John 15 verse 2, it says, Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Me is Christ. Every branch in me, Christ, that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And uh, there was a woman in South Africa, a very godly woman. She once said, I don't know where, you've got an apple. What is the fruit of an apple? She first asked, what is the fruit of a Christian? And everybody says, fruit of the Spirit, love, peace, joy. I said, no, no, wait a minute. That's the fruit of the Spirit. What is the fruit of a Christian? People thought for a while. She took out a, she mentioned an apple. She said, what is the fruit of an apple? It's more apples. Plant in the ground, it grows into a tree. Might be a bit wild, and more apples grow. And I don't want to become doctrinal, but I don't want to be one of these every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. In America, I happen to know in our country we've got basically the richest gold reserves in the world. But in America as well, there were these things called gold rushes. Terrifying things. You've got someone finds gold, and uh, someone hears about it a thousand miles away. Everybody just comes and tries to find gold and get rich quick. Let me ask you something. If you heard of gold in your backyard, if you heard that there was a $10,000, make it a million, buried one foot deep in your backyard, how many of you would go right after the past tomorrow and take a shovel and dig it up as soon as possible? How much more important is a soul? I can guarantee you, I say this to people, that if you offered me all the gold in Africa, or one prayer, just one prayer of a godly woman, I'd choose that one prayer. You know why? Because that one prayer might bring someone to Christ. I'd throw away that money. I don't want it. My granny, my granny is a very godly woman. She lives on a farm. She's married to what we call an Afrikaner. But last year, she almost died. She had cancer in the spine, and it got worse and worse, and eventually she went to hospital. And the doctor said she's going to die. The doctor said she's going to die. 
We came to the point where we all expected her to die. But like, let me ask you a question. It's so easy. We all know we have charity. It's so easy to give out tracts on the street. It's so easy to shout and talk to people about Jesus. It's not that hard. But what will you be doing? Do you truly love people? What will you be doing when you die? My granny, as she was dying on her bed, all she could say is, Doctor, are you saved? Doctor, are you saved? Doctor, are you saved? Doctor. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, and I'm not loved, I am nothing. My granny didn't die. Miraculously, she healed. But then they said to her, you're never going to walk again. Never. Sorry. And I was, I've got a prayer club. I told you about it. And she was on her bed, and I said to her, do you want to give me a prayer request? And you know something? Even though her legs, she couldn't move them. She didn't say, I want my legs to be held. I asked them to pray for that. She didn't mention that. She said, Roy, just one thing, that souls might be saved. That's all she said. I'm sorry. I know another godly woman, Miss Dobby of South Africa. If you want to meet Christ, come to South Africa and I'll show you Miss Dobby. Eighty-something years old, one of the godliest women. I don't know if you could meet the godlier woman. But something funny happened to her one day, two years back, I think. This godly woman was holding a pot of water whole boiling water and she fainted and the water poured down her body she woke up in pain and they took her to hospital and she was in hospital for seven months oh I love this woman she's part of the prayer club but you know she didn't just in this agony and pain think oh lord what are you doing to me she just took it as another opportunity to win souls. And she was in this bath, this bath, an agony in this bath, as her burnt body was in this warm water. And there's this black woman in South Africa had to wash her. And you know, she didn't say to her, Jesus Christ died on the cross, Jesus Christ it's all wonderful stuff, and you must say it many times, but she didn't have to. She, she was Christ. She lived Christ. All she said to this woman was, as she was lying in the bath in pain, do you know Christ? And the woman looked down and said, no. And the next day,